Hey everybody and welcome to the third and final part of this 2D character creation series. Hopefully you've enjoyed this series so far. If you have, remember to hit that like button. And if you want to see more 2D animation content, be sure to let me know in the comments below. In the previous two videos, we designed the character and then added some armature. So our character is now more poseable. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at lip syncing. So without any further ado, let's just jump right in. So you're going to need your character. Now, as you may notice, each one of these is a separate stroke. For example, the torso, the head, and so on. Now for the mouth, you can make this a separate object if you want, but I find it's a lot easier. Let me just delete this. And that's to use the head stroke. So this is our head here. And it only has two layers, the line work and the colors. So we're going to add a new layer, and this is going to be for the mouth. Now we're on frame one. Let's go ahead and draw our mouth. So make sure we're in draw mode. So I'm just going to give him a default smile for now. And since we need to add color, let's add a new layer. Go here, add a new layer. And we just need to move this layer down. There we go. Now we can fill the color. So I'm going to press T, select fill. Then we need to go over here, change this to solid fill, select a color. And then just fill this in. So there's our first mouth shape, and the idea is we're going to draw a whole bunch of different mouth shapes. Then, using my new favorite modifier, we're going to be able to choose between which mouth shape we want to use, and it will make sense as we're lip syncing. And this can be used for a whole bunch of different things, which I'll show you at the end. But first, it's probably a good idea to know what mouth shapes we need to draw. So to do that, let's go over to your search engine of choice, and then we can just search for lip syncing mouth shapes, and then just change to images. You can see we've got loads of different references for mouth shapes so yeah go ahead and download it and then maybe open it up in blender and if you want i'll probably make a chart of vlad's mouth shapes so if you guys want to use that as a reference then there should be a link in the description so go ahead and check that out so now if you've got a reference we can now go ahead and add the shapes so i'm going to zoom right in here i'm going to make sure we're on the mouth layer let's jump one frame forward so now we can see that i'm on frame two it also says it up here if that helps so on frame two, we're going to add a different mouth shape, and then we're also going to change it to the mouth fill and then fill it in. So let's just do another mouth shape real quick. Let's change this back to the pen, change this to a solid stroke, change this to black, and there we go. So one thing you might find uh, is a bit difficult is if you start to draw now, you can still see the previous stroke until we actually let go. I'll just undo that. What you might find easier if you just add a dot here where you know you're going to start. So for this mouth shape, let's do something like this. Let's see how we're going to do this with fangs. Um, the reference I used, it was just normal teeth. With this, I just need to add a couple of fangs. So something like that. I'm going to press Y to change the layer to mouth fill. Change the tool and then just fill this in. So this mouth shape is an F or a V. It will work for both. So now I'm just going to jump to the next frame again by pressing the right arrow key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to draw a bunch more mouth shapes. Um, it's the same process Again, you guys get the idea by now. So I'm just going to draw these and I will be back in a second. So there we go. It didn't really take too long to add all the different mouth shapes. And we have a bunch of different ones that we can use. So I would suggest taking your time to make these look better. So just jump back to the first frame. We're going to be using my new favorite modifier. So let's go to modifiers panel, add a new modifier, and let's go to time offset. Now this modifier is pretty cool because it enables us to choose which mouth shape we want to use at any time. By default, the mode is regular, but we want to change this from regular to fixed frame. So now when we play through this, we'll see that the mouth doesn't move unless you change which frame you want to show. So now we just want to change this back to one, which is our default mouth shape. Now, before I do the lip syncing, I just want to mention that we have this influence section here, which is quite important because just like the mouth shapes, we can add eyebrow shapes or eye shapes and expressions. So what you want to do is go down here to layer and we can choose which layer that we want to influence. So this would be the mouth. Now, if we change this to say four or five, notice a problem. We can see the fills underneath didn't change. Now you could add another modifier, 
change the layer just to be the mouth fill. But every time we change the frame, we'd also need to do it for that one. So that would just be more work for us and we don't want more work. What we can do is just merge these two layers. So if we're happy with everything on these two layers, I'm going to select this one and we could bring up the search operator. For me, it's spacebar. But if you're using a different button configuration, it's probably going to be F3. So with this open, we can type merge. And we can see we have this operation here, which is the grease pencil merged down. So, or we could go to the object data properties tab here, which shows us our layers. And we can see we have this icon, which is a layer specials menu. Open this up and click merge down. And it's the same process. But as soon as we do that, we can see it's been renamed to mouth fill. So if we go back to our modifier, we can see this is red, which means that the layer that we were using is no longer available. So just press X, get rid of it and then just select mouth fill. And there we go. Now we can change this whenever we want. So I'm going to change this back to number one. And with that done, we can now move on to actually lip syncing. So first we're going to need some audio. We're going to split this window and then we can change this from the 3D view to the video sequencer. And then within here, just shift A and then go ahead and add your sound or movie clip, whichever one you want to use. So once you've added the audio, we actually don't need this anymore. So you could uh, just move it out of the way or right click and join areas and just get rid of it. If we play the animation now, we should be able to hear the audio as well. Hello everyone and welcome. So apologies for the accent, it's really, really bad, but that's the best I can do, I guess. <laughs> so now some things that might help if we go down here to playback. So for the sync, I've not changed this. I found that play every frame is good. If you want, you can enable scrubbing. So when we drag this and play through the timeline, you should be able to hear the audio. And also if you have a full scene, Sometimes I notice that the frame rate drops. So let me just switch this back on. Over here, you'll notice when we play through this, you'll notice the frame rate uh, should play constantly, it should be 24 frames or as close to it as it can be. So we can see that's fine. If you notice that the frame rate is lagging, I find it's helpful to hide the other things in the scene. For example, the background and any other characters that you have, just press H and hide them. So then when we play through, the frame rate will be good. So by now you're probably shouting out the screen to get on with the actual lip syncing. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, to lip sync, it's really, really simple. All we need to do is add a keyframe on this modifier anytime we want to change the mouth position. So it would be helpful if we change this from the grease pencil to the action editor. So for frame one, let's add a keyframe. This is our starting position for the mouth. So I'm going to add a keyframe by clicking this button here. Or you could hover your mouse over here and press I and it will just add a keyframe. Now you'll notice that the automatic keyframes is enabled, which is this button here. So that means if we jump to a different frame and then just simply change this number to something else, we can see it's automatically added a keyframe for us. So we don't need to press this button and we don't need to press I. So let me just get rid of this. So now we want to play through this and change the mouth shape, add a keyframe every time he speaks. So I'm going to press play and find where he first starts to speak. Hello. So around here we can hear that he starts to say hello. I'm going to jump one frame back and make sure we add a keyframe here. Just so that from frame 1 to frame 16 nothing changes. Then on frame 17 we want to find a H sounding shape. So I believe it's right at the end. So that kind of looks like a H. And now depending on how fast or how slow the person is speaking, you may need to add a double frame or essentially just hold that position. So if we just jump one frame forward, click in here and then hit enter, just to add a keyframe, just so that frame 17 and 18, we're using the mouth shape 10. Then if we jump another frame, let's find the L shape. And I've just noticed that I've not actually put it in, so I'm just going to use a different mouth shape. This is a TH sound. Uh, so this is a more of a thank you sort of sound, but I'm going to use this for now. That's fine. Uh, jump to the next frame, add another keyframe. Jump to the next frame and let's find the O sound. Jump one frame, add a keyframe and there we go. So sometimes you might only need to hold the position once, but sometimes you might need to do it three times. Again, this will all be different depending on how fast or slow the person is speaking. So let's go back and see what we have. Hello. So he says hello. And then let's just add one more. So that's four because when he says hello, the O is more extended. And then on frame 25, let's just change this back to one. If we play through, oh, everyone, he says everyone. So we can jump a frame ahead 
that's an E sound. So he says the first part of the word pretty quick, so I want to change this to a V. Let's extend this for two frames. And then for the one, I'm going to use this mouth shape twice. Then this one twice. And then the N shape, which is this one. Maybe hold that for two additional frames and then change this back to one. Now let's see what we have. Hello everyone. So we can see the timing's a little bit off where he says one. We need to extend the V for a little bit longer. So again, what we can do is just grab these, press G and just move these out of the way. Then within here, we can just add the V a few more times. And there we go. So that's the very first part of the lip syncing done. But it's really easy, we just need to play through it a few times and scrub through, change the keyframes and make sure you get the correct mouth shapes. Depending on how long your audio is, you may be here for a little while. I did just finish the episode one of Vlogging with Vlad, and that's just two characters talking for a couple of minutes. That took a little while, but it's not actually too bad. Now, this timer offset modifier is amazing because, as I say, it's not just for mouth shapes, it's not just for lip syncing. You can do it for the eyes, as you notice that the eyes blink. In the Vlogging with Vlad video, he also made some hand shapes. So when he waves, uh, he can change his hand. I also did the same thing with the sleeve. So when he moves his arm, we can move the sleeve as well. In fact, let me just go ahead and open up the file and show you. So we can see this is episode one of Vlogging with Vlad. If you haven't already seen it, there will be a link up here. Maybe go ahead and check it out and uh, maybe don't tell me how bad it was. <laughs> and if we press play now, you'll notice that Hello, the frame rate everyone, is really bad. To my new so we can hear the audio but the actions are all lagging behind. So that's why I mentioned before, if you want, just hide a few things. For example, I'm gonna select my background, press H to hide it, hide all these things here. Get rid of Boris the bat. And yeah, we just got these two guys. So now if we play through. Hello everyone. We can see the frame rate is good. My new podcast series. And it's not lagging behind. If we just zoom in, we'll notice the sleeve here. You can see that it changes just to sort of fit with the arm. So as the arm moves up, it pushes the sleeve up. Again, it's just a minor detail, but if you remember before, sort of it goes behind the arm, which doesn't look good. And again, with the hand, we have a whole bunch of different hand positions. So you can see we have some different hand shapes. So yeah, this uh, modifier is amazing. <laughs> you can use it for a whole bunch of different things. And that should be it for the lip syncing. As I mentioned at the start, hopefully you found these videos helpful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.